Three of the Grand Prix have been chosen by Daniel Ricciardo as his favorites. As an eight-time Grand Prix champion, the 33-year-old has an abundance of career-high moments to choose from. Even while he can be happy with those triumphs in his career stats, there were numerous races that didn't happen in the broadcast spotlight he emphasized. Watch this video for full details on why he included defeating Michael Schumacher in that list. First up, Ricciardo reveals his best F1 drives, the race in Germany 2014. In his last interview as a McLaren driver, he talked about the best drive of his F1 career to date while sitting down with SpeedCafe.com. It's difficult for Daniel Ricciardo to select his top three Formula One performances from well over 200 Grand Prix. When confronted with that question, he pauses and gives it some thought, his ever-present smile twisted in a mixture of thought and memory. The responses were surprising because he chose races that were significant to him for deeper reasons. Ricciardo has won the Grand Prix eight times. The first time was in Canada in 2014, and the final time was in Monza in 2021. Both would be reasonable selections because they both represented groundbreaking performances in one manner or another. Instead, he recalls a race from 2014, where he finished third and engaged in a battle with Fernando Alonso that helped solidify his reputation as a top-tier driver. When asked by SpeedCafe.com to name his top three Formula One drives, Ricardo laughed and said he's not going to go for a win because that's clear. He chose the race in Germany in 2014 and said it was the race where he gained Alonso's respect. Held at Hockenheim, Ricardo started fifth but dropped back after a collision between Kevin Magnussen and Felipe Massa at the first corner. After a safety car period during which the latter became inverted, Ricardo was left to compete with Lewis Hamilton and Kimi Raikkonen for six. In the closing stages, Alonso put pressure on the Australian and the two engaged in a fun scrap for fifth place throughout several circuits. As an explanation, Ricardo said that they were battling. Alonso had fresh tires when he exited the pits, so he passed him on the DRS straight and didn't defend into the hairpin because of the fresh tires. But Ricardo didn't care about the new tires. The fight continued and they kept passing each other. Ricardo said it was simply an unexpected battle, particularly on his end. Ricardo believed Alonso wasn't expecting to battle him, and given that he kept coming back, Alonso must have thought that he was going to lose the battle. But Ricardo believed he had a point to make. He felt that it was that day that Alonso would know his name and earn his respect. In his opinion, what should have happened in one corner instead ended four laps later. Alonso finished the race, which was won by Nico Rosberg in fifth place, clear of Ricardo by less than a tenth as they crossed the finish line. Next up, the Suzuka 2012 race. With a variety of race victories and podium finishes under his belt, he chose to focus on a contest from his second season in Formula One when he faced off against seven-time world champion Michael Schumacher. When asked to name his top three F1 drives, Ricardo responded, one left of field is Suzuka 2012, according to SpeedCafe.com. Ricardo said that in the race's closing stages, he defended Schumacher and finished 10th to win the final point. He surprised himself with his racecraft because he defended and the amount of ease he had defending Michael Schumacher. While Schumacher was in the third and final year of his Formula One return, Ricardo competed for Toro Rosso in 2012. The German finished on the podium at the European Grand Prix earlier, despite no longer being the imposing force he had been with Ferrari in the 2000s. At the time, Mercedes was a team on the rise, and Nico Rosberg won the Chinese Grand Prix for the company, giving it its first victory since the 1950s. However, Toro Rosso was just the ninth best team, with Jean-Éric Vergne's occasional eighth-place finishes representing the Italian team's greatest results. Midway through 2010, Ricardo made his F1 debut with HRT before transferring to the young Red Bull team for 2011. The 2012 Japanese Grand Prix took place after 15 rounds and 20 events into the calendar year. Sebastian Vettel and Fernando Alonso were engaged in a close championship race as it took place in dry circumstances. While Alonso had Ferrari's point advantage going into the race, Vettel started on pole, but he was quickly eliminated after a collision with Rosberg, Romain Grosjean, and Mark Webber at the first corner. Ricardo, who had qualified 16th, moved up to 10th. When he made his second pit stop on lap 36 of 53, he moved up as high as 7th during the first pit sequence before settling into 10th for the sprint to the finish while battling off Schumacher. With five more races remaining in the season, Sebastian Vettel's victory cut Fernando Alonso's point lead from 29 to just 4, which proved to be a turning point in the championship. The following time out in Korea, Ricardo finished 10th after turning in one one of the greatest performances of his budding Formula One career. His final 
Global Points Paying Drive of the Year came in the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, which was then the third to last race of the year. After his attack at Suzuka was turned down, Schumacher would only score once more in Formula One during his career, with the seventh place finish of his final race in Brazil. Up next is the 2018 Monaco Grand Prix. The fact that Daniel Ricciardo rates his effort at the 2018 Monaco Grand Prix as one of his best F1 drives may not come as a surprise. He was the fastest in every session, race, and other events. The Australian would simply not be stopped that weekend, winning the race on Sunday after taking the pole position and dominating all three practice sessions. It was a brilliant performance for a variety of factors, including athletic, psychological, and emotional ones. In essence, it was Ricardo at his best. The Perth native had been cruelly denied two years earlier when Red Bull botched a pit stop, sending him back out onto the track behind Lewis Hamilton. Track position around the streets of the principality is crucial, and the Mercedes driver was able to more or less canter to victory, despite having great pace in the run to the flag. At the time, Ricardo was discouraged and yelled at his team. He said that he was called in the box and that they ought to have been prepared because he didn't make the call, he was called instead. When questioned about a potential explanation from the team, he said he didn't want to hear anything. Ricardo felt like he'd done his best and got nothing in return. According to Ricardo, even if he didn't win at Barcelona, he deserved to win the 2018 Monaco race. He claimed he was hurt from losing out at Monaco more than any of his other races. With the weekend off to a good start, Ricardo entered Monaco two years later against that backdrop. Ricardo maintained control before establishing a slim but useful lead, despite being pushed into Santa Volte by Sebastian Vettel at the start of the race. On lap 17, he made his first pit stop in response to the early pit stops made by his Ferrari rivals. Things took a new turn 10 laps later when he reported a loss of power with 50 laps left. The realization that the race would be another close call caused him to beg, will it get better? Over the team radio. Daniel, it's negative, positive, came the reply. The Australian could have gone into a downward spiral during that crucial discussion, but he instead pulled himself together. His advantage quickly vanished, and Vettel sat in the second gear of his former teammate's gearbox, harassing him to cause an error. There was none, and although his times dropped and stabilized in the mid-119 range, he was still around a second behind the pace. His pace improved once more in the last part of the race. Finally, why Daniel Ricciardo ranks beating Michael Schumacher for P10 among best races. The 2012 Japanese Grand Prix is among Daniel Ricciardo's top three drives, which is an unusual selection for one of the best performances of his career. At Suzuka, he only earned one point while driving for Toro Rosso, but he said that his final race was a turning point in his embryonic Formula One career. During the race's final lap, Michael Schumacher, a seven-time world champion who had started from the back row of the grid, was being held off by the Red Bull of Daniel Ricciardo. The young Australian, who was able to fight well to keep the legendary German in the rear for the whole of the race and finish ahead of the Mercedes driver by eight-tenths of a second at the checkered flag, proved to be an implacable foe for Schumacher that day. Ricciardo thought it was a turning point for him in the sport because he was still in the early stages of his Formula One career, and he had little experience competing head-to-head -head with the greatest driver in the history of the sport. When asked about his best F1 drives, Ricciardo responded to speedcafe.com that it was Suzuka 2012. He said in the race's closing stages, he defended Schumacher and finished 10th to win the final point. He added that at the time, he was still intimidated by him and Schumacher was like a god to him. Ricardo said that if there had been live betting, he wouldn't have wagered on himself that he would hold him in the rear for the following 10 laps. After the sports outing at Suzuka that day, the 2012 season still had a number of races left, but eight-time race winner Ricardo said that speaking with Schumacher the following weekend was another experience that helped him feel more at ease in the Formula One world. Ricardo said from that he got a lot of confidence. The race was incredibly significant for him as a result of his 10th place finish. Schumacher then commended him at the ensuing race during the driver's parade. He needed to have some validation from someone like that at that age and that stage in his career. Ricardo said that he wasn't aware of what he was doing to him at the time, but he greatly increased his self-confidence. That's it on Daniel Ricardo's best F1 drives and why he ranks beating Michael Schumacher for P10 among best races. Let us know what you think in the comment section. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel.